All right, Alexander, let's do a quick video on uh, the fight, the war of words between um, Turkish President Erdogan and French President Emmanuel Macron. And uh, yesterday, Erdogan said that, uh, what did he say, that Macron has uh, has mental mental issues or, or what was the exact well, I think I, 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 I don't remember, but it was about mental issues that he needs. Yeah, to... I'll pull that up. What, what, what do you make of what's going on? Because we also have news now, real quick, that Erdogan is now urging uh, Muslims in France to boycott. No, Muslim nations to boycott mm. French goods. Good. So that's the latest strike from Erdogan towards uh, towards France. Well, again, it's Erdogan playing his uh, usual game. He's setting himself up as the great leader of Turkey, the great leader of the Turkish people, the great defender of Islam, and he's fighting back against Macron. Macron, for his part, you see his popularity plunge, is playing the part of the great secularist. And the two are fighting each other in this uh, wonderful war of words. It's very amusing and entertaining to watch and listen to. But of course, there is an overarching, uh, you know, geopolitical issue, if you like, which is that once again we see uh, Erdogan and Turkey um, in a in a in a conflict with another major power. This is France, which of course has sided so prominently with Greece and Cyprus over the East Mediterranean issue. So Erdogan is obviously very angry about that. And this is probably what is ultimately behind all this anger that is now coming out of him uh, 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 towards, directed towards Macron. But at the same time, it shows the ultimate incompatibility between Erdogan's Turkey and Europe, the European Union, as it was, it had all those aspirations at one time to absorb Turkey. Well, I think we can say conclusively that they are gone forever with Macron, the great European integrationist, now quarrelling with Erdogan in this public and extraordinary fashion. Yeah, let me read you the exact uh, words that Erdogan used, just so we're accurate here. I'm taking this from Market Watch. It says, the French government said on Sunday it would recall the country's ambassador in Ankara, after Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan insulted French President Emmanuel Macron in a series of speeches, notably suggesting he needed treatment on a mental level. That's a direct quote. Macron needs treatment on a mental level. <laughs> what is remarkable, what is very strange about this, Oh boy! It, it is, what is very strange about this is that Macron, who is usually, you know, the hero, of the pro-EU left in Britain is now actually being criticised from is for Islamophobia from some of the elements for some of these, these the, the, those people there They're actually siding with Erdogan on this one, which I, I I find so so bizarre and so strange that I simply can't you know get my head around it. It will do Macron no harm at all in France. I mean he will get support from people in France. Um, over, over this issue, um, there is a lot of suspicion of Turkey um, amongst a lot of French people. So it will actually play well in France. Um, I don't think it'll lead to any great breakthrough in his popularity, though. But you don't call the leader of another country, uh, you know, mentally ill in that way. I mean, that this is Erdogan's language is completely off. Uh, um, it's it's completely off uh, limits in, in in diplomacy, and it's impossible to see now how Macron and Erdogan can ever make this up. I mean, what they've each said about the other is extraordinary. Now, you know, we all talk about other other you know countries and dipl diplomats, but it does make an interesting contrast with Russia, where they are extremely careful not to get into sort of public slanging matches with Erdogan in this way. Even after Erdogan's air force shot down a Russian fighter plane, a Sukhoi-24 plane, um, it was very striking how the Russians, uh, I mean, they were you know, critical of Turkey, but they never resorted to these sorts, this kind of language and they didn't you know, recall ambassadors and behave in that kind of way. So it's... It's an interesting contrast, and um, it certainly makes for drama, and it certainly makes for theatre, 
but he also shows that Erdogan has another enemy now. Yeah, he's, you know, Erdogan's running out of, uh, yeah. I don't even know if we can even say he has friends anymore. I mean, he's, it, I mean, it just seems that he's pissed off everybody. I, I just can't think of anyone that's, that wants to deal with him at this point in time yeah. outside of Putin, which that one I still want yeah. is, I mean, I understand it, but I don't understand it. And there's, I think there's a lot of people that take issue with uh, Putin on uh, on the way he's dealing with with Erdogan. Actually, I think, I mean, if I could be really honest about it, I think that Putin's uh, reputation, yeah. his PR, has taken a really big hit from his uh, his constant off ramping of Erdogan's exploits. I mean, it really I has. Think I think on the international stage, Putin's Putin's kind of. Taking a real big hit there. It, 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 it absolutely has. A lot of people in Russia don't like this. And, of course, Erdogan uh, um, insulted a lot of people in Russia, offended them a lot by uh, uh, receiving Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, and going out of his way to talk to Zelensky about Crimea's union with Russia being an illegal annexation which Turkey will never recognize. And Putin um, was actually challenged about this at a, um, a, a, a at a Valdai conference, which is one of the big sort of Russian sort of, you know, meeting places where Putin meets with all sorts of people. And he was asked lots and lots of pointed questions from people there. You know, why are we constantly appeasing a person who who talks like that about us, and who uh, speaks in that kind of way, and who takes those kind of positions, and he had to do an awful lot of explaining, which I don't think much of his audience was very convinced by. So there is no question at all. A lot of people in Russia are extremely uneasy and unhappy about this. They think Putin should take a much harder line with Erdogan. They should take a much harder line with Erdogan over Syria. They should take a far harder line with Erdogan over um, the Caucasus issue. And, of course, on Crimea too. So, you know, when you say that Putin has had a knock and that his reputation has been damaged, unequivocally that is so. Yeah. And finally, Alexander, you mentioned that... Uh... Erdogan is is blasting Macron because Macron did uh, put a stop to Erdogan's adventures in the East Med. I think there's no doubt about it that the minute Turkey came up against France, Turkey completely backed off. You've mentioned many times that the French military is is levels above Turkey's military. Of course, you have two NATO countries there, but you mentioned that the French military operates on a different level. There's also been, and I got an email from one of our viewers, and I think they made a good point. There's There has been talk that... Uh, Macron has been using a lot of soft diplomacy in order to uh, thwart Erdogan's advances with regards to Azerbaijan and Armenia. In other words, France might not have been doing much on the, mili on the military side of things, but Macron has been working the phones. And one of the things that this viewer said in their email, and which I have read and makes sense, I don't know if it's true or not, I can't confirm it, is that actually Macron spoke with Trudeau and he was the one that convinced Canada to stop uh, supplying arms to Azerbaijan and that this also pissed off Erdogan. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but I, I can see Macron using some soft diplomacy to to once again um, weaken Turkey's position vis-a-vis -vis Azerbaijan and Armenia. Unequivocally, and I have no doubt that is true, and I, th I think our viewer is exactly right. I think it probably was Macron's call to Trudeau that persuaded the Canadians to 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 do that thing and um you know macron whatever else he is i mean he's well i think all of you know my own personal opinion of macron i mean he does try to do diplomacy in a way that no other french leader has done for a very very long time and he do, he's 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 obviously making very strong play against erdogan who he clearly loathes and at the same time he's also trying to position France as you know the the more assertive leader of Europe the country that will protect European states and for Macron Armenia is a European state it's a it's a country where uh, has lo long historic connections with with France as does Greece of course and where there's large friend uh, Armenian communities in France so 
It's something that, you know, Macron is taking a very, very active role in. And by the way, Macron is also trying very hard to uh, uh, um, argue against Merkel about relations with Russia. He wants to open up to Russia. He even told the Baltic states and um, told the people in the Baltic states that that's what he wanted to do. Not, I think, a message some of them would have welcomed very much. So he's, he's, he's tries to do active diplomacy. And in the Caucasus issue, he will want to, uh, you know, assert, obviously he can't send troops there, but he will try to work in a way, you know, through soft diplomacy to involve France in the, dipro in the diplomacy that goes on to settle the crisis in the Caucasus. So it's he's playing he's playing his his hand rather well at the moment, and one one has to say that. Yeah, and a final note. And, it, and, yeah. and by the way, just to quickly add, again, it's Putin providing Erdogan with off ramps that has given Macron the space to do it. Yeah. Uh, Macron can play hard cop to Putin's soft cop because Putin persists despite a lot of people in Russia, as I said, being very uneasy about it, in playing soft goal. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. I, I think, um, you know, it's one thing for Erdogan to to piss off Cyprus and Greece when you're talking about the EU or even NATO from a Greek perspective. It's another thing to piss off France. Bad move, huh? Very, very bad move. move. It's a very, 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 very bad move. But at the end of the day, we're talking about Merkel. I mean, she's she, Macron is the only leader in Europe um, she has to speak to because France is an absolutely critical part of the EU architecture. If France leaves the EU, the thing collapses. It's as simple as that. France is, you know, the, an absolutely central player in the EU. And it has... A, an, an advanced economy and a very powerful and well-organized military. On, on that, without question, the two best militaries in NATO, in NATO after the United States are those of Britain and France. And at the moment, I'm going to get, guess that the French one is better because the British have had many problems with their military in recent years. So, you know, France is an important player and not one to be disregarded at all. And it's got strong relations with Armenia. It's got strong relations with Greece. It's got strong relations with Canada. But uh, Macron is trying to build relations with Russia. It's not a country that Erdogan should disregard at all. And calling its leader names isn't isn't wise in any way. All right. With each passing day, I just have a feeling inside of me. I don't know what it is. With each passing day, it seems that Erdogan's He's losing it. Yes, I mean, he is. like up here. I, I, I don't I, know. I I'm not, I, I, there's something I, not right. I agree. He's now quarrelling. He's now quarrelling uh, uh, with the with the French. He's quarrelling with the Americans in an extraordinary and gratuitously unnecessary way about the S four hundred missile that he system that he bought from Russia. He, you know, the Americans are very upset and angry about that. But Erdogan goes out of his way to make it worse. At the same time, he's taking on the Russians in the Caucasus. He's quarreled with the Saudis. He's on bad terms with the UAE, another important Arab state. He's on bad terms with Egypt, another important Arab state. Even, even Qatar isn't too happy with him. Even Iran, with which he used to get on very well, isn't too happy with him. This, this doesn't make any kind of sense. I think he's running out of road diplomatically. And it does make me wonder about the stability of his position in Turkey himself. There is something, frankly, feverish about this, this, this behavior of Erdogan's, which makes me think that he doesn't feel too secure. All right. We'll be monitoring this. Something is up. All right. Alexander Berkhurst, thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button. Look for us on BitChute and on Odyssey as well. Please join us on those platforms. Also join us on Patreon and subscribe star. Go to our Discord server. Donate to us on PayPal. We always appreciate your donations. It helps out this channel. And of course, a purchase on the Durant shop really helps out this channel as well. You'll find all those links description box down below.
Indeed, uh, and if you come to our channel, you'll find all these great things, our amazing mugs, our amazing shirts. Um, Alex is showing you there more of our mugs, our amazing mugs and shirts. Serbia, uh, Serbia, <laughs> Serbia. So, um, and of course, we've got we've got all you know, lots of countries, flags of lots of countries on our mugs. Uh, Germany, I think. Germany, Germany, yeah. Germany, yeah. Um, um, and I've got I've got Greece somewhere. Um, I've got Armenia Arme right here. There uh, you got Arme Armenia. There, I've got the United States. So there you go. So all the all these, and we you'll also start to find American uh, states flags of American states. I mean, and you can also find them on our shirts. The best shirts in the world are amazing t-shirts and polo neck shirts, and you can find them on our hoodies and also on our hats. And you can see I'm wearing a hat now with the flag of the United Kingdom of Great Britain there too. And we've got also ebooks, and our shop is expanding all the time. And you support our channel by coming to our shop. Our channel faces many challenges, but if you come to our shop, you support us there as you do if you go to Patreon and subscribe star and all the other things that Alex was talking about and look out for us on our various other platforms which alex was also talking about and at the same time if you come to our shop you will own the great things that we have there and um we get tremendous feedback about those so come to our shop support the duran look us on all our other channels go to subscribe star do all those things that alex said and we look forward to seeing you again in our next broadcast all right alexander mercurius thank you very much take care everybody